Nelson Mandela once said, there can be there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. It is the power of that statement that compels and empowers me to be here in front of you today. I don't want another young gymnast, Olympic athlete, or any individual to experience the horror that I and hundreds of others have endured before, during, and continuing to this day in the wake of the Laring Astar abuse. Of course, that was gold medal gymnast Simone Biles testifying about the abuse she suffered at the hands of former USA Gymnastics national team doctor Larry Nasser. And now the legal wrangling between USA Gymnastics and Nasser abuse survivors is over. USA Gymnastics and the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee have reached a $380 million settlement with the victims. More than 90% of the victims, which number more than 500, voted in favor of the agreement. Some of the provisions in the settlement include victims become stakeholders at USA Gymnastics. There will be a dedicated seat on the organization's board of directors and an in-depth look at the culture and practices within USA Gymnastics that allowed abusers like Nasser to run unchecked for years. Hundreds of girls and women have said Nasser sexually abused them under the guise of medical treatment when he worked for Michigan State University and USA Gymnastics. Elite gymnasts like Simone Biles, Michaela Maroney, and Ali Raisman are among Nasser's victims. All three testified in September before a Senate Judiciary Committee looking into how abuse allegations were handled. Let's listen to some of their testimony. I remember sitting on my bedroom floor for nearly three hours as I told them what happened to me. I hadn't even told my own mother about these facts, but I thought as uncomfortable and as hard as it was to tell my story, I was gonna make a difference and hopefully protecting others from the same abuse. I answered all of their questions honestly and clearly and I disclosed all of my molestations I had endured by Nassar to them in extreme detail. They told me to start from the beginning. I told them about the sport of gymnastics, how you make the national team, and how I came to meet Larry Nassar when I was 13 at a Texas camp. I told them that the first thing Larry Nassar ever said to me was to change into shorts with no underwear because that would make it easier for him to work on me. And within minutes, he had his fingers in my vagina. The FBI then immediately asked, did he insert his fingers into your rectum? I said, no. He never did. They asked if he used gloves. I said, no, he never did. They asked if this treatment ever helped me. I said, no, it never did. This treatment was 100% abuse and never gave me any relief. I then told the FBI about Tokyo the day he gave me a sleeping pill for the plane ride to then work on me later that night. That evening, I was naked completely alone with him on top of me, molesting me for hours. As you pursue the answers to those questions, I ask that your work be guided by the same question that Rachel Din Hollander and many others have asked, how much is a little girl worth? I sit before you today to raise my voice so that no little girl must endure what I, the athletes at this table, and the countless others who needlessly suffered under Nasser's guise of medical treatment, which we continue to endure today. We suffered and continue to suffer because no one at FBI, USAG, or the USOPC did what was necessary to protect us. We have been failed and we deserve answers. Nasser is where he belongs, but those who enabled him deserve to be held accountable. If they are not, I am convinced that this will continue to happen to others across Olympic sports. In reviewing the OIG's report, it truly feels like the FBI turned a blind eye to us and went out of its way to help protect USAG and USOPC. A message needs to be sent. If you allow a predator to harm children, the consequences will be swift and severe. Enough is enough. 
All right, joining me tonight are special guests, trial attorney Jamie White and NASA abuse survivor Grace French. I want to thank you both for joining me this evening, and those of you who are familiar with the show will recognize Jamie White. He is a regular on the program. He was instrumental in bringing about this settlement. And Grace, I want to begin with you. First of all, congrats on the settlement, and kudos to you uh, and all the, the women involved for their courage. I would like to begin by having you tell our viewers um, how you got involved in this case. Yeah, I was a dancer growing up and I at around 12 years old, I had a wrist injury on the playground and my parents, being the wonderful parents that they were, um, asked around for the best sports medicine doctor in our little town of Okemos, Michigan, and everybody said Larry Nassar. So I went to see Larry um, from the ages of 12 to 19 and saw him regularly for sports-related injuries because of dance and recreationally gymnastics as well, and I was abused at every appointment. I didn't as know that it was abuse. I thought that what he was doing to me was trying to help me, and I thought that his methods were unusual but never questioned never questioned it mm. all right grace so now i think we'll term it a victory clearly a victory um uh, a sober victory is probably the best way to put it um how do you feel about the settlement how does that make you feel i think it's great because it means that survivors voices are being heard i am so thankful for all of those who were really close to the case and especially jamie and his team for making sure that there were non-monetary components of this settlement i think those are the things that will make sure that nothing like this happens ever again to anybody else and that's what the survivors want we want to make sure that our voices are heard beyond just today and are echoing through the future of gymnastics, of sport across the nation, because we don't want the pain that we felt to be felt by any other child, athlete, survivor in this nation or the world. All right. Now, Jamie, I want to bring you uh, into the conversation. Um, uh, congratulations, first of all. I'm sure it was a very hard fought, uh, fought victory. Um, and, and you heard what Grace had to say, what their concerns were. So we see the big money, right? Money's always there and you, and you get the big money. But at the end of the day, what was your focus uh, in negotiations and trying to come to an agreement? What were some of the things that you were really focused on getting to make sure that these things don't happen again? So that's a great question, and, and it really goes to the heart of the issue. Um, you know, and I, I, I guess I want to add, you know, Michigan State's have kicked in $500 million. So, I mean, this is a $900 million-ish settlement, um, which is historical on so many levels. And to your question, Michael, you know, our focus was how do we put pain in the future for institutions that choose to overlook these sort of indiscretions? Um, these young women are extraordinary in so many ways, and Grace is being extre extremely humble. You know, she has started an organization called the Army of Survivors that, you know, she has put her own time and resources into that continues to help other people outside of herself. And it, it's consistent with what these young women did. You know, part of the reason for the delay in the settlement, if you want to call it the delay, was once we got, you know, there's a mediation um, secrecy, of course, but once we got to a point where we thought we had a remedy, these young women wanted non-monetary, uh, things that did not have anything to do with them. They wanted board, you know, they wanted seats on the board. They wanted millions of dollars uh, attributed to um, future, uh, you know, future problems being dealt with. And I just think that speaks volumes to to kind of what to your question, what our focus was as we went through this process. It was about making sure this doesn't happen again. And you know, while the young women are going to be compensated for the harms they suffered, in no way, shape, or form, you know, can a 12 or 13 year or 14 year old girl um, be properly compensated for what occurred in this case. But what can happen, and what I think did happen is a message to other institutions, you know, whether it be a church or a college university or a hospital or, you know, whatever, anybody that puts young people in their care is that there is a cost associated with not taking care of the young people that you are profiting from associated with your affiliation. And that's what happened here. You know, I mean, whether it was Michigan State University or United States Gymnastics, you know, there was a profit culture 
And, uh, you know, going forward, you know, it's going to cost you a lot of money if you ever think about um, acting in this negligent fashion in the future. Uh, Grace, what, what's next for you? Um, what do you see going forward? Actually, you know what? I want to read something from Rachel uh, Den Hollander. She was one of the victims as well, I think very early on, if not the first. She said, justice has been done in so far as it can be, and it is good that we rejoice in that, but remember that tomorrow everyone wakes up still living with the consequences. And I know that's something you're dealing with. So talk to me about what, what's next for you, Grace? Yeah, I think, like I mentioned, the non-monetary part of this settlement is amazing, but you still have to implement that. USAG still has to make sure that they're holding themselves accountable. And if they're not, then we're there to do that for them. We will always be there making sure that kids are safe, that athletes are safe, and that they're holding their promises close to them and that they're delivering on those promises. I think um, we'll do that through um, our sister survivor network and we'll do that through the organization that I started at the Army of Survivors, making sure to hold those institutions accountable. Um, I think also, you know, this is a huge step for survivors and healing as well because they now have the ability to pay for things like therapy and resources for healing. And I think that's something that's often overlooked when we see these big dollar signs. Well, there's also a cost to that trauma that we're experiencing over and over again and there's a cost long term that trauma will never leave me and that the repercussions of what he did to me will last my entire lifetime so that cost is is large and this settlement helps so that i can find healing and that we can all find healing grace do you have any words for some young girl or, or anyone young boy girl who might be suffering in silence out there or perhaps waiting for some form of justice to come their way who are similarly situated to the victims in this case yeah i think realizing that you're not alone in that and that there is hope there are things good coming your way and the world is a better place with you in it all right, and Jimmy, I want to give you the last word here from your perspective. What message does this settlement send to the public at large? <clears throat> you know, we're not going to tolerate institutions profiting, you know, at, at the expense of young women and or young men, whether it's a church or whether it's a, a university. You know, we're going to find you and we're going to hold you accountable. Um, yesterday was a step in that direction, and uh, we're not going anywhere. So if you're in that position right now as a institutional leader and you know that you have this problem or you've had it historically, it, um, clean out your closet because we're going to find you. All right. Well, Jamie White, thank you so much again for coming on the show and all the hard work you did in this case. Grace French, thank you so much for coming on the show, for all your courage. And again, congratulations to both of you on what is just a tremendous victory, not only for you guys, but for everyone uh, that is, has, all, has been touched by this uh, terrible, terrible event.